Hello everyone, welcome back to Automation and Beam and G Drive. My name is Tim, and today we're just going to be building a simple car. A very, very simple car. A car that is so simple, you might in fact just call it boring. I'm of course talking about an average car. A car that is so average, it's not good or bad, it's not fun, it's not boring, it's none of that. It's just so unbelievably average that's hard to comprehend oh and if you see the background there's the um 4sb gt making 951 horsepower yeah this car is not going to make that and these two cars right here yeah they're race cars one of them's a hyper miler the other one's a track car but yeah let's just go to the actual car maker now if you're looking at my cars none of them are normal at all none of them this one right here, the Chihish 4SB. Actually, no, it's the Chihish 4x4. This is this car right here, about 340 horsepower. This thing is just super slow because it's actually an EV. This thing right here is probably one of my most normal cars. It's a roofless, window shieldless car called the Grusho Hata. And I'm fairly certain it makes about 550 horsepower, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, I'm not sure. This Santa Fe, to my knowledge, makes about 300. This Sorrento makes about 350, which is more than any Sorrento. And that's not even including um, this Flex right here, which makes about 600 horsepower or so, which is more than an actual Ford Flex makes. For reference, this little car, the Tuo Muso, which is slightly smaller than a Miata, this car right here makes, so oh, I don't know, like 340 horsepower. Yeah, then we have the Kiata Basayo, which has the same engine as this car. Now, this car right here also makes the same amount of horsepower. This car right here, the Nemoir Cobalt Phantom, yeah, that makes about a thousand. Crash Bucket, about a thousand. These cars, the SpongeBob Edition and the Renault Carif, both make about 550 from a V8. Well, one that revs to 12,000 RPMs, that is. The Squat Nation truck uses the Turbine Thrasher V12, so it's obviously overkill. This race car uses a, I'm fairly certain, 700 horsepower V10. This right here is just 3,500 horsepower of electric horses. This is the original file for the Turbine Thrasher. The 4SBs are all insane. I think the least powerful one is like 650 horsepower, maybe 620, I'm not sure. The Hesbrum makes about 4,500. This car, the Torque Master, which I'm actually doing a revision on, that right there makes probably about 5,000. And the B8, this is probably the most concerning of them all. The B8, which is about the same size as a smart car, makes 282 horsepower. The B8 is pretty extreme for what it is, and it's even more extreme when you consider that a, it makes about four times as much horsepower as a Mitsubishi Mirage, which it is smaller than. Uh, the Mordwagen makes 1,900, Turbine Thrasher 3,200, the Darsanat makes about 1,000 or so, I'm not sure. Anyway, we're going to get to our actual car, basically building our equivalent of a Toyota Corolla. That is what we're going to be doing, and let's go. Now, the Toyota Corolla has always confused me to some extent because I don't know if it's a coupe or a hatchback or an SUV. I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to assume it's a sedan. That is all it is. It's a sedan. Not any of these. Nope. Get these out of here. And no, this is an extended, this would be like an extended wheelbase Corolla. No, 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 we're not doing that. We're going to make this thing tiny. Okay, these are too, these are mods and they're way too long. Nope. I'm going to just go down here and look for something with a max wheelbase of about 2.5. Okay, these look pretty good, but they're too old for me. Ice cream? What kind of names do these cars have? Some of them have names. Some of them are just 1994 sedan. Some of them are literally don't even have names. Well, that one was called Ice Cream. Okay, these sedans are absolutely disgusting. So I'm actually going to use an older sedan. 
specifically the um, the 1995 four door 2.5 meter wheelbase vehicle. Now we're gonna make this out of aluminum because that's what an actual Toyota Corolla is made of. Okay, I'm just gonna assume ladder chassis because it's the cheapest. We'll just make it steel. We're gonna do front transverse since this is gonna be a front wheel drive car. Now I'm just double wishbone, double wishbone. We'll put the quality up five since it is supposed to be a Toyota competitor. I don't think you guys are ready to know just how terrible this engine is. It makes 169 horsepower, which is about which is the same amount a Toyota Corolla makes. But you want to see something disgusting? Look at those dis look at that disgusting look at the disgusting headers on this thing. Every single car I make has these race headers. Yes, even the Uno Muso, which is made with the oldest technology in the game, even that car has this. I'm fairly certain the only other car that doesn't have race headers is the um, Tectonic vehicle, that black stained glass monstrosity. But yeah, we're just gonna go to this. Body quality a little higher. Now, paint. Let's see, what does Global have to offer? Okay, Meerkat is this weird white. It's like a creamy white, and I don't like it. I want to make it a little more matte, to be honest. Oh, uh, yeah, I think it was already as matte as it could get. You know what? Let's make it a tiny bit darker or something. Just to give it that vibe of, this is a mass-produced car for the masses, for the poor people. That's what this is. It's a car for the everyday person. The car is going to be painted with Meerkat. The roof is not going to be carbon fiber. It's going to be Meerkat. Because we all know, Meerkat is probably the most average car color ever. Seriously, I'm fairly certain more, the most common car color is white. I'm actually serious when I say that. I'm fairly certain the most common car color is white. Now, that's looking cool and all. Wheels, I don't... I don't even think I'm going to do anything to the wheels. Okay, front wheel drive. That's what we're doing. CVT, like the actual Corolla has. I'm fairly certain the Corolla's top speed is like 100... I want to say 125. Like, it's electronically limited to that. And, yeah. Actually, no. We're, we're going to make it go so much faster, but give it a speed limiter of... Yep, actually no, 126. We'll make it only go that fast. I, I want to give them that extra one mile per hour of freedom. And let's see our graph real... Okay, it's not showing up probably because we don't have all our things filled out. As, ordin as usual, we're going to make it t a little higher quality. Electric LSD. Um, yeah, I'll just do that. Now, we're going to do just regular radial... Yeah, hard long life. That's the most generic tire out there. I think that is the tire that almost every car uses. We're going to give this car 235s. Of course we are. We're actually going to make the car a little bit more compact in some areas. Yeah, the front's going to be squished in a little. The rear is as well. And that's pretty much about it for the squishing of the car. 18-inch wheels. Those are stretched rims if I've ever seen them. Okay, looks like that's as big as the wheels get. About 17 inch rims. Of course, they're gonna be steel, five quality. This is a Toyota competitor, not a Fiat Chrysler competitor. We're just, we're not gonna do solid disc. We're gonna do vented disc. Wait, where is it? Yeah, I think that's actually what um these cars use, vented discs. We're just going to make it a conservative 10 inches, just for safety. And, I don't know, we'll put drums in the back. That's like... Okay, this isn't even a hybrid. So, it, actually, no, we're just going to put one salt vented disc with one piston in the brake caliper. 8 inches in diameter. Add a tiny bit of quality. We're going to put... Flow optimize for good fuel economy. Oh, wow, this thing is stupidly aerodynamic. How aero does it get? Okay, 0 0.141 is would make this the most aerodynamic car ever put into production. Yeah, we're just gonna give it that. 
I think 0 0.27 is pretty good for a Corolla. Now, we're going to do basic interior. That... You know what? We're at least going to give them standard infotainment because they're not buying a Soviet car that was made with technology from like four decades prior. No, we're going to give them just a more comfortable car. I think that we're going to give them just traction control. And safety, yeah, we're just going to do advanced 2010s. Also, this car is made with 2012 technology. I just realized that. Okay, I don't know how much a Corolla weighs off the top of my head, but I'm going to assume they're not super heavy. So yeah, I'm just going to do that. Okay, there's rear weight there. Standard. Passive. Okay, that, that's not the worst thing ever. I think I've seen worse for the suspension. Yeah, let's give it a ride height of a full foot. Pretty much. Yeah, I think that looks pretty Corolla-like. Like, old Corolla, but still, it's a Corolla. Kinda. Gearbox is... Okay, I have to fix the gearbox. Oh, that's what the transmission was whining about. Not being able to use all of its speed, and being forced to use it all at the very beginning. So yeah, we're just gonna do that. This transmission's pretty reliable for a CVT, to be honest. 32.2 miles per gallon. You Considering that this thing has a lot less horsepower than the Kiata Basayo and the Tuo Muso, which have smaller but more powerful engines, this is kind of sad. 9 seconds to 0 to 60. Not too far off from an actual Corolla. I believe I remember reading it. It was 9 seconds flat. So let's make this thing slightly faster by giving it an 8 second flat 0 to 60. Yep. And we are basically done. I'm, I'm not going to name it right now. I'm just going to do the actual fixture work and then I'm going to name it. So the car itself is finally done, and I decided to name it ALFS, A-L-F-S, standing for Average Little Family Subcompact, because that's what this thing is, and... But you know what? Now I think it's time to take this to Beam and G Drive. And well, we have it. We have our car, the Scalavra ALFS, or Average Little Family Subcompact, or Sedan. I think this car doesn't look too bad for what it is. I think the headlights are blacked out or something like that. Yeah, how does the car drive? It's slow. The exhaust is definitely muffled, so... It brakes surprisingly well. Like for the brakes being so small, it stops really well but it does not accelerate fast at all. But I am fairly certain this thing does get good fuel economy. And we cannot forget our 10 beautiful, beautiful plastic lawn chairs in our not even built interior because building interiors is my least favorite part of automation. But I like how we're already at almost 120. Like, we are pretty much redlining this thing. And... Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, my, my turbine thrasher would have been complete at a full stop, like, four seconds prior to when this car came to a stop. It has four lug nut wheels, because this thing is a compact car. It doesn't need five or six or center locking wheels. It just needs stuff that will just stay on to the car. It has 235 tires, which are the most standard tires you can possibly get. The rear lights are, oh, an attempt to look like a Toyota Corolla's lights. It has a single exhaust. It's dual pipe, but it, it comes out of the same. 
it comes out of the same exhaust pipe. It does not matter. But also, I think this car is great just because it has so many plastic chairs in it. That is the thing that makes it better than every other car I've ever made in this game. So, I'm going to race it against another vehicle on the drag strip. Specifically, I'm going to take it to the city drag strip, because that is actually where they tell you your time. We're getting ready right now, and so far, lining up might actually be the hardest thing to do for this. Because this thing, the Unomuso is kind of rowdy. Oh my... I might actually beat the modern car. I might actually beat them. I'm not even kidding. This is a car from 1946, and I'm going to beat them, it looks like. And... I did. Oh my goodness. I want to know just what this thing's quarter mile time was. 16 seconds for something that slow isn't bad whatsoever. You know, that that is not at all bad. I'm going to take a guess that my car did a um, 7 second 0 to 60. That's what I'm going to take a guess. So, you know what? That's pretty much all for one drag race. We're going to be doing another one with a foe you might not have seen before. Yeah, you're looking at that right right next to you. That is a pigeon. And, yeah, the game was having a lag spike. Whoa. Can't go past the line. Okay, are we gonna beat it? Oh! Oh, no! Even if we got a head start... Like, even if we did not have that rough start, that thing would still be faster than us. Oh my. This thing can't even break a 100. This thing can't even break a 100 mile per hour trap speed. Every car of mine, except for, like, the slowest of the slow, can do that. And that can't. Oh my. Yeah, it's slightly faster than the Uno Muso when I used it. So yeah, this thing, it's ever so slightly faster. I'm just going to admit it. That car is a little faster, but I don't really care. I really don't care. This car is just such an average commuter car that it isn't impressive, nor is it boring and underwhelming. The fact that we got seating for 10 in here is the actual impressive part. Yeah, Tesla Model S with jump seats? Get out of here. No. We have this tiny little itsy bitsy spider looking car, and it has 10 seats in it. 10. Yeah, we have this itsy bitsy spider looking car with 10 seats, and. I don't know why it's causing lag whenever I break. Like, this has never happened to me, but... Oh yeah, I like how the seats are getting dirty if I drive in the gravel. That's lovely. And also, those seats are like the most ergonomic seats ever. But hey, at least you can still drift in it. Wait a... what? Did I just do a front-wheel drive burnout? I want to see if I can actually do this. Yeah, those brakes are getting hot, though. But seriously, yeah, whenever I break, the game slows down for some reason. 
might just be because this car is so bored the game is trying to make it more interesting. That actually might be what is going on. And, like, it doesn't even fly in the air cool. Even then, it's still lame. Like, there's nothing cool and nothing bad about this car. It's too good to be mocked for being a terrible car, but it's too boring to be liked by in any capacity. Oh, and of course the engine is broken. Like, seriously, it's such a cheap car that it literally does not matter. This car is like the most boring car ever. Are you, are you kidding me? You struggled to go up that? That was sad. Even my Turbine Thrasher could go up that. Gosh. I don't- I literally just found this, um, whatever it's called. I don't even care because we're in this thing. But I will say, that was a pretty sick drift, I'm not even gonna lie. Wait a minute. Oh, I think I just activated sport mode. Yep, sport mode, baby. Okay, all right, can we go over this? We can. And, oh my, it's, it's just like driving your first ever car like a crazy person. A very crazy person, considering most of those bushes are extremely sharp and have tons of needles, which will ruin your paint. No, seriously, braking is slowing the game down for some reason. I have no clue why, but it's something that is kind of annoying me. But you know what? As I ended the, um... As a few of my videos have ended before, I'm gonna drive this thing into the ocean, because, to be fair, that's where this thing belongs. A fish can deal with it. But yeah, using the e-brake, it doesn't lag. I don't know what it is, I think I might need to restart the game, but... Yeah, I'll worry about that later. All I want to do is just get rid of this thing, because... This is a bad example of what a car is. Oh! Oh, um, I gotta check on my, um, party, party goers, and, um, I wanna say at least five of our party goers are dead. Like, there is no other way that this car is for a family. Like, this car is not for a family, it's for a party, it's for party animals who stay up way too late and are extraordinarily broke. So broke, they had to buy a gutted Toyota Corolla, and they had to put plastic lawn chairs in as seats. But hey, at least they get a dashboard from, a, like, the 1960s. That is literally the only upside of this car. It has a dashboard and seats. The car isn't even particularly fast, nor is it crazy on... Nor is it even super good on gas. This car is literally... Like, one of the more mediocre, easily the most mediocre car ever made. I don't like repeating myself, but it's it's just a fact at this point. This thing is so mediocre that I just want, I just want to get rid of it. If I could get through one of those, and even on this bridge it goes slow. Like, it feels slow, and we're going 100 and something miles per hour. Like, we were going that fast, and it felt slow. Seriously, this thing is sad. But, you know what? I can't complain. At least it can go 100 miles per hour. Not all my cars can do that. I'm looking at you, Tectonic 0.05, that literally does not even function in BMG Drive due to just how unbelievably broken it is. Like, seriously, that car is the definition of broken. Like, there is no other way to describe it. That car is broken beyond use or description. That car is just... 
I don't think there's a better way to describe it than with the word um, hodgepodge. It's a piece of garbage, hodgepodge, made out of glass. Well, probably several tons of glass if it were real. If it were real, I think it would be really cool as like an art installation. Like, a critique on like the cartooning community and how crazy they can get. But you know what? We just put the car into the water. The elves. We just put the elves into the water. And you know what? I like this. I think this is good. And we finally rest in peace. But there's one more thing I want to do. That's right. We have Jeff. And since Jeff is an EV, they don't need air. So we can drive Jeff underwater. This is, in my opinion, the one advantage of owning an EV. You can drive it underwater. That's pretty cool. So basically, yeah, I'm just judging this car, laughing at them. I don't know, probably probably destroying the tires, to be honest. Because I'm fairly certain this thing can spin the wheels so fast that if it gets fast... I'm fairly certain that this thing... Okay, and we're about to emerge from the water like Aquaman. And... Oh, ho, 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 ho. one of the tires literally tore itself to shreds. Once I crash this car into another thing, the video will truly be over. 